In this video, we're going to start to summarize the different statistical tests that we usually have in a beginner course in statistics. And we're going to do so by grouping the tests together. So which one are one sample tests, which ones are two sample tests, so, so that you can use them as a guideline to know what tests to use and how. So what are the biggest groups of tests that we have? We usually have one sample, uh, one sample tests and two sample tests. That's going to be the biggest highlight. So we're going to start in this video to go through the one sample tests. In the upcoming videos, we're going to go through two sample tests. So what type of one sample test we have? These are going to be one sample test. This is a big group. So one sample test. Now, in this, in this course, in this type of course, we usually have a test on means and test on proportions. So let's, uh, let's subgroup this. We're going to subdivide this into two. We're going to have over here test on means. So test on mean on one mean, one sample mean over here. And then below it, we're going to have a test on proportion, which we're going to discuss in the next video. So over here below, we're going to go to test on proportion. Test on proportion. Now, what matters in a test? It matters to understand when we use it. So what hypothesis we're testing, what test we're using, what critical value we have, and how can we design a confidence interval for that? So when it comes to a test on mean, what's a typical hypothesis that we can have? And we'll give examples to make the, the, the cases more practical. So let's say we're testing we're testing whether the mean content of a bottle of water is bigger than 500 milliliters. So a typical bottle would have 500 milliliters, but then we take one bottle and it seems to have more than that. So we want to test whether that, um, that mean of those bottles is more than 500 milliliters. We're testing literally whether a mean differs from a sample from a certain value. That's why it's a test on one mean only. That's why it's one sample because we're going to because we're going to take one sample of bottles and draw the mean based on that. So let's see what kind of test we run. Well, it depends on the sample size. We could either run a T test or a Z test. For the sake of the example, let's make it simple with the T test. And we're going to we're going to see in a second the difference between that and the Z test because it's very small. So what does the T test imply? It implies a difference between the sample mean that we're going to we're going to calculate from the population mean under the null hypothesis which would be 500 and we want to know how much is this difference in terms of standard errors so the standard error is going to be the standard deviation of the uh, of the sample divided by square root of m so in that case we would be using this t test now the only difference between a t test and a z test that we could be using is whether the sample size is big so if the sample size would be bigger than 30, I'm going to write it below like that. If the sample size is uh, relatively big and it's higher than 30, we would go for the Z test. But assuming the sample size is small, let's say in this case the sample size is less than 30, then we would go for the T test because when the sample size is small, we also only have that uh, access to sample data. So we would have access to the sample standard deviation, which would imply that we will use the T test. But if we have the Z, if we have the Z, uh, I'm sorry, if we have a big sample size, which would give us also access to the population standard deviation sigma, then we would be able to use the Z test. That's the difference. So the, the Z test is designed for large uh, samples. That's why we don't have degrees of freedom there, because we assume that the sample size is infinitely large. But for small samples, we have the T test to work with. Now, with that said, what else do we need to know from this test? We need to know the critical value. So the critical value is going to be the critical value for one sample test on mean is going to be the T critical value. And because it's one sided, we're going to have the significance level alpha, which we do not divide by two because we keep it on one tail only. So let's assume that alpha would be 0.05 for the sake of the example. And the degrees of freedom would be the number of observations minus one. That would be the T critical value. And again, if it's a two sided test, then we would divide the significance level by two because we have to take into account both tails of the hypothesis testing. Now, with that said, what else do we need to know here? The confidence interval. How can we calculate a confidence interval and what would that give us? Let's suppose for the sake of the example that we're doing a 95 confidence interval for the population mean. What does this tell us? The sample mean would be an estimate of the population mean. It's not going to be exactly representative of what the population mean is. So the 95% confidence interval is going to give us a range of values that's going to include the true population mean of those uh, bottles with a 95% probability. And it's based on the sample mean. It's going to be X bar plus minus uh, margin of error. And that margin of error is based on the T critical value that we're going to use. This one, we're using that in our confidence interval. So it's the T critical value. And because it's a confidence interval, we will have 5% significance level spread on two parts. So here we're going to have 0.05 over two parts. 
the degrees of freedom are going to be n minus 1 and we multiply that with the standard error which is going to be the standard deviation of the sample s divided by square root of n that would give us the confidence interval so that is an example of what we're going to do in these videos this is the highlight of one test this is a one sample test on mean we saw why we use it we saw what type of test we have in the next video we're going to do the same method for the test on proportion to see what kind of test is when we use it and then we're going to go to two sample tests and we'll see the similarities and differences between one samples and two samples